Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is a follow-up video to my Hoyerweiss slide repair video where we just had drawings and a talk. And this one is a practical hands-on. So in this video we will have three vices. The two you see here and the third one where I have archive footage because I don't have that vice anymore. And on each of the vices the repair has been done differently, so I will show you first the orange one, then the archive footage, and the third one will be the big one because that was the most complicated repair. Um, in that order, and I will also talk about some stuff you have to do to do it right. So we will start with the orange one. So on the orange one, I chose to use shims and I put a shim on the inside of the, on the inside of the dynamic jar. So I simply measured the gap between the flanges here and the static jar divided by two and tried to buy shim stock and put this in. Uh, as you can see, this is blank because the shim rides on this blank surface here. Um, so this is simple, but um, I recommend putting the shim on the static jaw instead. Sure, you have to cut a slot here, you have to make the slot in the shim, but you can actually bolt the shim into the static jaw while I glued this in on the dynamic jaw and it's not easy to file correctly and everything it wants to um, the glue wants to separate so I recommend putting this on the static jaw instead but it works quite well you still have a little play and this is because I couldn't get the perfect shim stock so I would have to have 1.1 millimeter thick one but I could only get one and it means that you have most contact. If you clamp the flanges together, you will have contact at the bottom. So I can still wiggle at the top a little. I try to zoom in so you can see that. So we have contact at the bottom and the top not so much. And you can see it that you have still a little play at the top. So the Bronx shim will probably wear down after a while and then the whole thing will contact and the wiggle will become less but right now it's a little bit but compared to before where we had a lot of play this is much better and um, so there's one or two drawbacks and the first one is let me close the wise so I didn't think about that, but it's happened with that vice. You now have, for some reason, this is leaning over a bit. I don't know why. Apparently there is some variation between the thicknesses of the flanges. So it's more like to one side now. This is something I didn't anticipate, but it happened. But I can live with that, not a big problem. And the other thing is, because we just took out the uh, play horizontally, we still have play vertically and I can show you that. So you still can move the jaw upwards. So if you clamp something in, if you clamp this in, you can see how this moves. A little bit upwards when you when you clamp it in. It's not much, but you see how it goes upwards and downwards. This is because when you try to clamp something in, it it pushes it apart and it goes up. So these are the two drawbacks you have with that repair that you still have vertical play and that maybe the jaws aren't aligned perfectly. But on the other hand, it's simple. 
you just have to put the shim in static jaw, dynamic jaw, your choice. Just measure and buy and you're done. So every, anybody can do that. Super simple repair, quite effective. I recommend doing that if you don't have any other tools or anything. You can do that, just have to do a little bit of work. I mean, you can take a jigsaw and cut the slot out and anything, so simple. That is that for the simple one. And now I'm going to show footage of the second vise that I don't have anymore, which is similar to my shim repair, but with a mill, yeah, somebody machined the sides of the static jaw, the left and right side of the top here, and put a shim, put the shim inside here. So this is the guide. So let's switch to the archive footage. Well, that is also a way to fix a wobbly hoyer wise is to machine the top of the slide here on both sides and then put some kind of shim all the way down and if you tighten up the, the bolt here you can actually get rid of the wiggle almost so but you need of course a mill or a shaper to machine that parallel to each other See if there is enough. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's perfect. And the last one is the most complicated repair. This is repairing the dynamic jaw, the slide and the dynamic jaw by either welding it up or putting a shim on it. I welded this up and I'm going to show you how I did that. And you have just minimal wiggle now. And so if you uh, clamp something in, it's not moving upwards like on the other repairs because you actually repair the slide so it's not moving. So you can see still a little bit of wiggle and I will explain why that is too but this is the perfect repair to do and you can actually do it by hand you don't need tools but it's not easy. So let me take this apart and I show you how I did it and how it looks and what to look out for. So this is the welded up slide. It's not 100% perfect, but it's good enough. And I basically welded it up quite a bit because it was really worn down and then filed it down to the proper length. And of course, you will have to keep the angle correct and everything. So you can also just put on a shim on the mangled jaw. Then you don't have the problems with keeping the proper angle. Just need to put the right thickness on and put thin bolts on. But I, I wrote this up and it was not easy. It was quite an ordeal because I made some mistakes. So I had to do it twice. So I'm gonna tell you what to look out for and uh, yeah, one two things you need to do and one of these things you need to do for any repair even for the orange one and this is getting these two flanges here they need to be parallel to each other so those both surfaces need to be parallel because this is the ideal state I guess and over time if you have a worn out vise you tighten the bolt more and more and those come together a lot and over time it deforms them and if you want to take measurements you have to have this parallel so this is important because 
if you want to measure the gap for the shim on like on the orange one you need to have a proper measurement of the distance and you need to have these parallel so how can you get these two parallel and for that you take the original bolt and you need a piece of metal and then you don't put the ball in this way but you put it in the wrong way like so right put it in like so and then you take the nut so you don't mangle the thread like so right and then you put a small piece of metal thick piece of metal but some piece of metal here and then you just tighten this up and this will press both halves apart. Works quite well. Important is to have the, the bolt here otherwise you mangle the frets. So this is how you get these back parallel and once you do that you know the distance here and for the orange one this is all you need. You just measure this distance and you measure the thickness of the I beam here and then you have the difference divide this by two and you know how much how thick the chim needs to be that you're gonna put here or there. So that's all you need to do for the for the shim repair. And the other thing for the weld repair that is really important because if you don't do it you do everything wrong. And this is you need to repair this slide. So if that is, if the dynamic draw is worn down here, chances are high this is worn out too. So you need to take something straight and look how much of a bow is in here and usually the middle is quite worn down and the front and the back is not. So you will have to remove good metal here to get it straight. I did didn't get it 100%, that's, that is why I had some wiggle in the middle, but none at the front. I would have to take it down a little bit more here, but the bow is almost gone. I do recommend making yourself a template with the proper angle, which is 15 degrees if I remember correctly. So you put this in, and once it slides in there on all um, parts of the slide without wiggling, without play, but not just being in there that much, but being in completely, you have the correct machining done, filing down. So yeah, this template is comes in really handy to get this right. So just take a little piece of hardwood and um, a disc sander with an angle blade and get this to the correct angle. So once you have this part done, you are done with the static jaw on both sides. Perfect. The top is usually fine, so there's nothing you need to do there. Then you need to do a little bit of math. So you measure the distance, you measure that gap and the distance just like on the shim repair. And um, once you know the gap that is in here that you would cover with a shim on the orange one we it's it remains air on this repair basically if that is the inside of the dynamic jar there is this gap this air gap here and obviously this needs to be taller than this wooden template so you need to calculate how much that is with the angle and some cosinus and uh, tangent or something. You can calculate how much thicker this has to be. So you can see that the, that the wooden shim is a little bit smaller than the metal. This is uh, what the one millimeter gap here causes. So 
this is what you need to calculate and once you have that information you can buy the correct shim or you know how much to take off and if you don't have a mill like I you need to file this by hand so I made myself a guide so I know exactly how much to take off and this is also where is the reference surface on this dynamic jaw so you would think I can use the bottom part but this is worn the bottom part is also worn by clamping the front and the especially the front is worn down a little bit so you can use that surface and the only surface that is that is okay is this is the inside you can see there is a step here so this surface is the um, reference surface don't use that one just the inside here this should be the correct one because when they cut this cut this shape the cutter cut this two so this should be the correct one I didn't see anything else and this one is dead um, using the outside of the dynamic jaw might work but if you weld this up all in one go you lose that surface so this one is it for me maybe using a shim stock would have been easier but I chose to weld this up so I made myself this template and you can see it writes down here and it kinda shows me the correct angle there is a bump in here where the, where the nut is so you need to be careful of that one but otherwise I only use that tool plus a red paint marker to get this right yeah made myself this hardwood template this is a uh, some gauge that I put on this was what I took off too much in the first attempt so this is what I had to add so of course filing this is not easy and it's a lot of work so maybe a shim repair is easier but the results are very nice um, it's a lot of work especially if you don't have a mill if you have a mill it's probably much easier to do but it works and uh, if you have the time and the will to do it I recommend this repair the weld up repair is a, a good repair there's something else you need to be wary of and when you repair the slide you need to probably also take off a little bit on the sides make this nice and round because since this is worn down it's gonna rub on the outside here you can actually see that on the surface There's some rub marks and if you paint this it's just gonna take the paint off so you need to take a little bit off here make it nice and round and check if you have enough clearance so you don't rub on that yeah and that's about it so this repair was very complicated for me a lot of work but it did work out in the end and I did make some mistakes with the slide and had double the work so I show you that so you don't do that too and yeah that's that's it that is how you repair the slide just like I had it in my drawings it actually works in real life just with different amount of work involved so um, that's about it and I took a lot of footage when I repaired all these vices so you can look forward to these videos and until then see you next time